What I would like to offer you are the five major pieces to the puzzle of life. If we take the time to study each of these pieces and, and then put it all together, the chances of everything running well increases significantly. Mr. Schaff shared with me a straightforward formula when we first met. Allow me to share it with you. He suggested that there are typically around half a dozen factors that account for 80% of the difference. These factors include around half a dozen related to wealth and another half dozen related to health, which together offer an 80% solution to many problems. Mr. Shoaf then advised, become a student of these half a dozen basic factors. This is rather sound guidance. Success does not lie in accomplishing extraordinary feats. Rather, it involves executing ordinary tasks exceptionally well. Therefore, if one learns to excel in these key areas, such as mastering effective communication, success follows suit. While both the affluent and the less affluent can communicate, it appears that those who are well off tend to articulate themselves more effectively. Basic communication skills are essential for survival, but mastering them is the hallmark of success. Allow me to share what I believe to be the fundamental pieces of life with you, and then we can take it from there. Here's the first one, philosophy. Philosophy is basically what you know and what you know can really affect how things turn out in your life. It's not just what you know, but also what you don't know that can make a big difference. Sometimes not knowing something important can really mess things up. You might have heard the saying, ignorance is bliss, but that's not always true. It's actually really important to learn things and get information. And when you do learn something, it's smart to think about it carefully before you do anything like buying something or trying something new. Before you dive into anything, you've got to decide if it's a big deal or a small one. You don't want to waste your time on trivial stuff, giving it too much of your energy. That's why we say, think before you act. Smart people learn to think carefully about everything. We all need a good way to weigh up our options in our heads. Imagine if you thought something was really important, but it turned out to be not important at all that would be a big problem for the rest of your life. When you focus on something big, the small stuff becomes less important. We call that a big disadvantage. So it's super important to think things through properly. That's why we have talks, songs, lectures, and discussions. We talk to each other, argue, and really think about things. We need to figure out what's really valuable because you don't want to spend a lot of time on something that doesn't matter. So. Here's the deal. We gather information, think about it carefully, and then decide what's important. A big question in shaping your life is, what really matters? What deserves a lot of your time, energy, and money? Trump once told me, it's not just about working hard. It's about thinking smart. Many people work hard, but they don't think hard. They don't use their minds to figure out what's truly valuable so they end up wasting time on things that don't really matter. Figuring out what's important is a major piece of the puzzle of life. What you think about what you know, how you think about it, and the values you believe in. If you want to help someone change their life, you've got to start by changing their mindset, their philosophy, and how they think. Someone might say, just get motivated, that's all you need. But that's not true. If someone lacks intelligence and you motivate them, you'll just have a motivated person who's still not very smart. Motivation alone isn't enough. It's easy to make mistakes in judging things. Even after finishing school or university, it's crucial to keep learning. You should aim to read at least one or two books every week. It's tempting to let learning slide once you start working, but if you stop learning, your understanding of important values can become unclear you might end up putting too much effort into unimportant things. Continuous learning is vital. Imagine someone spending all their money on donuts instead of books. We'd say they're seriously lacking in mental development. If over 10 years, someone buys two tons of donuts, but only two books, mostly with pictures, it's no wonder their life isn't going well. The problem is they stopped learning after leaving school. They didn't keep up with new ideas that could improve their business, decisions, and overall life. You have to keep learning even after leaving school to avoid making mistakes in judgment. 
The reason most people end up average by age 40 instead of wealthy is often due to making mistakes in how they use their money. So what should a 15 year old do to become wealthy by 40 instead of just average? Start by setting a plan for their money wisely. This might involve saving and investing rather than spending on unnecessary things. Learning about finance and investing early on can make a huge difference later in life. Having a solid plan is crucial. If you start making mistakes with your money early on, it can lead to a mediocre life instead of a wealthy one. Small errors can add up over time, leaving you with pennies instead of a fortune. Some might think it's only 10 pounds, so what does it matter what I do with it? But that's when it really matters, especially when you don't have much. If you wait until you have a lot of money to start managing it wisely, you might find it's too late. We call these big mistakes in judgment. It's vital to have a good plan, even when dealing with small amounts of money. But it's easy to make mistakes, to not know what to do, or to miscalculate. Here's a good phrase to remember. Life is accumulative. Our mistakes add up to what we don't achieve, while our wise decisions add up to what we do achieve. The key is to correct mistakes as early as possible. I was fortunate to have someone like Mr. Schaff come into my life when I was 25. He asked me tough questions about my finances. He made me realize that it was time to check if my financial philosophy was sound and to correct any errors early on. Now is the time to start fixing things, not later. When you hear good advice, that's when you should take action. We're teaching young people now to have a good wealth philosophy starting at age 15, so they can be wealthy by age 40 or 45 at the latest, even if they're a bit slow in making wise decisions with their resources. So when should people start making wise decisions with their resources? As soon as they get the right information. You can't act on what you don't know, but the key is to keep learning so that good ideas keep coming to you. Philosophy is where it all begins. To make wise decisions, you need to study, read, have conversations, listen to lectures, and keep absorbing information. There's no better way to shape your philosophy than by constantly exposing yourself to new ideas. That's the first step in the puzzle of life, having the right philosophy. Now, here's number two, attitude. Attitude is simply how you feel. First, what you know sets the sail of your life. Then how you feel starts guiding you there. There are various ways to feel, aren't there? You can feel positive or you can feel negative. Consider this attitude. If this is all they pay, I'm not coming early and I'm not staying late on the job. That's a specific attitude, isn't it? If this is all they pay, I don't come early and I don't stay late. Now, do you think that if you carried this attitude throughout your life, it would significantly impact your journey as the years pass? The answer is undoubtedly yes. Another perspective is, no matter what they pay, I always come early and I always stay late to invest in my own future. Isn't that intriguing? Attitude is a matter of choice. You can opt to arrive early or late, leave early or stay late. It's all about choice. To make wise decisions, we require educated attitudes. Emotions need to be educated to comprehend where the true values lie. It's like sending emotions to school. When children are young, a three-year-old may throw a tantrum, but we accept it as part of growing up. However, it's not acceptable when you're 30. When you're young, you may react aggressively, but as you mature, you're expected to learn to control your emotions and understand societal norms. Attitudes are now a matter of educated choice. However we feel will significantly influence the course of our lives. Now, it pertains to our feelings towards a variety of aspects. Allow me to present you with a list. Firstly, how you feel about the past. When you're young, your past experiences may not be extensive, but I'm certain you've encountered some highs and lows, victories and defeats. Consequently, a part of our attitude is shaped by our emotional response to the past. Some individuals still carry the burdens of their past, being affected by past difficulties and losses. They carry these burdens as if they were a heavy weight rather than using the past as a learning experience. Instead of viewing it as a school of lessons, 
They see it as a threat to their present life. Therefore, part of the process involves addressing our attitude towards the past and how it affects us emotionally. Secondly, how you feel about the future. Facing the future is a crucial and integral part of our lives. Now, there are two ways to approach the future. Here they are, anticipation and apprehension. Anticipation is one way to look forward to the future. On the other hand, apprehension is another approach. Unfortunately, most people tend to face the future with apprehension, mainly because they have adopted someone else's perspective. Without having their own well-designed future plan, they are easily swayed to embrace someone else's vision. This is what will happen. Here's what's going to happen. It's all too easy to let your days be clouded by such thoughts. Therefore, at some point, you need to determine your own outlook on the future. How you feel about the future significantly influences your actions. If you lack confidence in the future due to the absence of clearly defined goals, you may find yourself taking uncertain steps. It's challenging to be optimistic about the present day when you haven't mapped out your future. Hence, setting goals is crucial for shaping your future. Write them down. Where do you want to go? What do you want to do? Who do you want to be? What do you want to see, have, and share? Even if circumstances change in the next 12 months, the key is to start planning now. Make a list of the cities you want to visit, the people you'd like to meet, your health and investment goals, and so on. Begin by jotting them down, keeping a journal, and allow these aspirations to evolve over time. Something that seems crucial now may appear trivial in two years' time. However, it's important to have a clear vision of the future now. Set your dreams, set your goals, as it significantly impacts the flow of your day based on your confidence in the future. Here's another perspective to consider, how you feel about each other. It how you feel about society, the community, and the country. That's very important. While it's easy to adopt a cynical attitude, cynicism significantly impacts the trajectory of your life. However, it's equally important to recognize that achieving success requires collective effort. A notable phrase to remember is, it takes all of us to help each of us. You cannot thrive in isolation. It's rare to find a wealthy recluse. Success necessitates interaction with others. We require society's support, as well as each other's ideas and participation in various arenas, including the marketplace and societal activities. Therefore, how we feel about each other holds immense importance. And the most significant attitude is how you feel about yourself, your self-esteem, and understanding your own value. It's about recognizing your potential, your intelligence, and your talents. All you need is guidance, coaching, support, advice, and experience. If you find yourself on the wrong path, it's crucial to heed the advice of those who have traversed that route before. Learning from their experiences and embracing their ideas helps us build confidence in ourselves. Self-esteem primarily arises from engaging in disciplines that lead to personal growth and value. We possess immense potential, but it's through discipline that we can harness and realize this potential. One of the main reasons for feeling inadequate is neglecting these disciplines. If you continuously let yourself off the hook or procrastinate, you'll struggle to maintain self-esteem. The ant philosophy embodies this idea to feel good about yourself, give your best effort. Just like ants who tirelessly gather resources during the summer, aim to maximize your efforts in every endeavor. Strive to give your all as it's the most effective way to boost self-esteem. Therefore, attitude plays a pivotal role in solving the puzzle of life's five key components. Move to number three, philosophy first, attitude second, Activity third, attitude determines activity. Success is about doing, not just thinking. While it may seem like our lives are designed by a higher power, our mental disposition plays a significant role. Decide what you want to become, then take action immediately. Let me share another philosophy from the Bible. I'm not a scholar, but my parents ensured I had a good understanding by the time I was 18. Here's the principle. Whatever your hands currently find to do, 
do it with all your might. This encapsulates the essence of activity philosophy. How hard should you work? As hard as you can within the time allocated for labor. In leadership management lectures, we teach, when you work, work, when you play, play. Don't play at work and don't work at play. Make the best use of your time. When you're working, give it your all. And when you're playing, enjoy yourself, but don't mix the two. Activity is a crucial piece of the life puzzle. When it comes to work, you need to determine your limits. Some people can work for 14 hours without issue, while others have physical constraints. It's essential to understand how hard you can push yourself and how much time you can invest. Similarly, when you're at university, you must assess your workload. How many classes can you handle? How many study hours do you need? It's crucial to recognize when you're reaching your limits and to replenish your energy accordingly. We all need to understand our activity habits. In my opinion, the best philosophy is simply to do your best in every activity. We call it doing your best. A man once asked me, I'm making about $50,000 a year. Isn't that enough? A businessman told me, my kids aren't starving and I've got my bills paid. We're doing pretty well on $50,000 a year. Isn't that enough? He wanted to know what I thought. Here's what I said. Yes, it's enough if it's the best you can do. We don't measure enough by a specific amount. We measure it by your best effort. I explained further, if you're capable of earning half a million dollars a year, but settle for 50,000, that's where the issue lies. It's not about the difference in income, it's about not reaching your full potential. Whether you make 10,000 or a million a year, it's enough if you're giving it your all. The key to a fulfilling life is asking yourself at the end of each day, did I do my best? If not, why not? Do I need to reevaluate my approach? Do I need to stop settling for mediocrity and start striving for excellence? So, always aim to do your best in every aspect of life. That's what truly matters. Once, a group of psychiatrists invited me to lecture for them in Los Angeles, which intrigued me, considering I had only attended college for a year. During my talk, I boldly stated, Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you what I believe most affects the mind. They asked, what do you think most affects the mind? I replied, I believe it's simply doing less than you're capable of. It leads to various psychological issues. When do you truly feel good about yourself? When you've given your best effort. You don't need to win the ultimate prize. If you've done your best, that's the ultimate victory. There's nothing like the soaring self-confidence that comes from giving your all in everything you do. It's what we call the philosophy of full effort activity. Attitude leads to number four, results. And that's what life is all about, putting the first three together. Good philosophy, attitude, and high activity to achieve the ultimate results. I've got a good phrase for you. Results are the name of the game. Now the challenge of life can be summed up in a simple phrase. Let me share it with you. I believe you'll find it thought provoking. The challenge of life is to make measurable progress in reasonable time. First and foremost, we must avoid being unreasonable with time. For instance, if we agree to do something and five minutes later, I inquire about your progress and you respond that you haven't even left the building yet, it's clear that asking after just five minutes is unreasonable. Conversely, if I wait five years to ask, we would consider that too late. We cannot expect significant progress in such a lengthy time frame, just as we cannot expect immediate results in mere minutes. Therefore, we must learn what constitutes a reasonable time frame for progress, growth, change, and development. This understanding is crucial for all, especially those aspiring to leadership entrepreneurship, or management roles where working with others is involved. We must hold ourselves to reasonable standards of time management while also expecting measurable progress within that time frame. How many years should a child spend in fourth grade? Approximately one. Some may ask, well, if they're good students, could we extend it to three or four? The answer is a resounding no. Spending four years in fourth grade is simply unacceptable. 
we apply family pressure, peer pressure, and various other forms of social pressure to ensure this doesn't happen. But wouldn't it be intriguing if we maintained the same level of social pressure throughout our lives? Consider this. What should society deem acceptable in terms of wise investments by age 30, enabling one to provide for oneself and their family? Somehow we seem to have overlooked such standards. Shouldn't it be considered desirable to achieve wealth by age 40? And shouldn't we question individuals who by age 45 are not at least financially independent? Shouldn't it be deemed unacceptable not to be financially stable within a reasonable time frame? What about individuals who squander their potential wealth on non-essentials from age 15 to 45? Shouldn't this be seen as unacceptable behavior? Teenagers often ask their parents why they aren't rich, pointing out that they live in a prosperous country like America. Aren't these valid questions? Consider the importance of having a sound plan versus a poor plan. Imagine a farmer who consumes his seed corn instead of planting it. Wouldn't we consider this reckless behavior endangering the future? It's an intriguing question to ponder. If we exert such pressure for academic performance in fourth grade, why not maintain similar pressure throughout life? It's a thought-provoking and debatable question. While society may ease expectations regarding ongoing results, I urge you to hold yourself accountable. Don't allow yourself to settle for less. Society may not demand much from you after university, but if you want to excel, you must impose those demands upon yourself. I urge you to carefully examine your results. We consistently assess outcomes at various stages of life, such as at ages 25 and 30, across multiple aspects, including health, wealth, culture, sophistication, lifestyle, and uniqueness. This ongoing evaluation serves to identify any errors in our actions. Making mistakes in our activities is surprisingly easy, which is why we emphasize in our leadership teachings not to confuse movement with progress. It's common to be deceived by busyness. Someone may appear busy for 10 hours a day, yet achieve little progress. It's crucial to be busy with the right tasks. Perhaps adjustments are needed in activity or attitude, or maybe even in one's philosophy. For instance, if someone justifies tardiness and early departure due to inadequate pay, it's a sign of a flawed mindset with long-term consequences. Regularly reviewing results helps pinpoint areas for improvement and potential shifts in mindset or behavior. Now let's delve into the final piece of the life puzzle, lifestyle. Lifestyle is essentially how you choose to live, and we refer to it as the genius of living well. What's fascinating about lifestyle is that all of us, particularly in this country, have the freedom to choose how we wish to live. Interestingly, you can derive either joy or animosity from your wealth, depending on your lifestyle choices. For instance, a father may possess money but lack style in his actions, as illustrated by a simple gesture of throwing money at his son. This highlights the importance of understanding that happiness is not accidental, but rather an art to be mastered. Economic knowledge alone does not guarantee happiness or cultural refinement. Cultured behavior requires study and practice, not just financial means. Therefore, the challenge is to find joy in simplicity while striving for one's aspirations. Reflecting on these five aspects of life, philosophy, attitude, activity, results, and lifestyle, prompts introspection on personal growth and decision-making. It's crucial to assess where one stands presently and make adjustments for a better future. As we conclude this discussion, remember, now is the time to shape the next decade of your life by embracing these insights and pursuing a fulfilling existence. In conclusion, the five fundamental aspects of life, philosophy, attitude, activity, results, and lifestyle, form the cornerstone of our existence and shape our journey towards fulfillment. Philosophy guides our beliefs and principles, laying the foundation for our decision-making. Attitude determines our approach to life, influencing our actions and responses to challenges. Activity reflects our commitment to effort and diligence in pursuing our goals. Results serve as checkpoints, indicating whether our efforts align with our aspirations. 
Lifestyle encompasses the art of living well, highlighting the importance of happiness, culture, and personal refinement. Together, these elements provide a holistic framework for self-reflection, growth, and success. By examining and nurturing each aspect, we can navigate life's complexities with wisdom, purpose, and resilience. Thus, embracing these fundamentals empowers us to lead meaningful and fulfilling lives, enriching our experiences and contributing positively to the world around us.